Hi everyone, this is the Ask Annie podcast, Horse Girl reviews on products you use. Due to the challenges of modern horse keeping, many horses can benefit from the support of supplements to help them look and feel their best. Every horse is different, so SmartPack has made it easy to create a customized supplement program for your horse. With over 350 supplements available and a team of equine health experts on staff to help you choose between them, SmartPack is the smartest place to get your horse what he needs. Visit SmartPack.com or call one 800 461 8898 to learn more about how Smart Pack can help you take great care of your horse today. We feature a special guest on this episode and are thankful to Smart Pack and their staff veterinarian and medical director, Dr. Lydia Gray, for being a part of this episode. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Lydia Gray, for being here today. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So you've already figured out with the doctor that I'm a veterinarian. Uh, equine veterinarian is how I think of myself. And I am retired from practice and I am the staff veterinarian and medical director for Smart Pack now. Can you tell us a little bit how you got into horses and a little bit about your equine background? Um well, I think a lot of people can relate that I always loved horses. I was one of those horse crazy little girls and I read the um, Walter Farley Black Stallion books. You know that series? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I do. For yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. And um, re- I- I'm sure annoyed my parents because every year for Christmas when I wrote out my list, every single line was, I want a horse, I want a horse, I want a horse. And so... <laughs> So finally, the um, the summer between my seventh and eighth grade year, so what, you're thirteen ish. I got my first horse, and uh, it was fabulous. And um, have had several horses past then. And um, I discovered dressage pretty early on, and um, that seemed to resonate with me. But I've done a lot of different sports, and the the horse I have now is a very versatile tracaner. And I've competed in um, dressage with him through third level, um, combined driving through prelim, and he's done some hunters. And then right now we're playing a little bit with side saddle. Wow, side saddle. That's really cool. Yeah. How did you how did you get into that? You know, I went to the World Equestrian Games in 2010 when they were in um, Lexington, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And uh, in between some of the competitions, we there's a like a a ring where they just demonstrate different breeds and disciplines and things. And this woman came in wearing a beautiful wedge with blue riding habit. And she was a, riding side saddle on a um, Arabian chest and Arabian. And I went, Oh my gosh, I want to be her. So uh, <laughs> ever since then, I have sort of kept my eye out for, I have perfect horse for it as far as temperament and confirmation. And I, I finally um, met a side saddle certified trainer in my area and got started and then was able to actually show recognized dressage last year. So that was kind of a, wow. a bucket list. Yeah. A bucket list item for me. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah, you really <laughs> seem to sneak things out and then just, just go for it. And yep, kind yep. of going into your, your degrees, I did a little okay. bit of research and quite the collection. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your education? Yeah. So um, I knew pretty early on that I wanted to be a vet. And so um I think for me, the the pathway was an animal science degree, you know, that's mm-hmm. pre-vet, so you get all your requirements. And I did that at the um, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. So I ended up with a, a bachelor's degree or a, a bachelor of science, BS, whatever. Um, but they, they ended up giving me, they changed midway, and they ended up giving me an agricultural science degree. And I'm like, instead of oh. animal science, I'm like, what is that? Oh, well. So um, I went into vet school there at Illinois still and got the DVM. And then I, I also had an interest and took some classes as an undergrad in um, marketing and communication and, and PR. And, and so after vet school, I went back to school. It was at the University of Illinois, but at their Springfield uh, campus, because that's close to where I was practicing. And got a, a Master of Arts in um, Interpersonal and Organizational Communication. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But well-rounded, it sounds like. Yeah, I try. Uh, kind of going back to what you are talking about in the beginning, I found that you did have your own veterinary practice um, before working for SmartPak. Can you tell us what you mainly focused on and how this experience uh, helps in your role now? 
Sure. So I did, was it my practice? I was just a lowly associate veterinarian. Um, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't own it, but it was a, mm-hmm. it was a mixed animal practice in central Illinois. And a mixed animal means you do everything from horses to cattle, to swine, to dogs and cats. And, and one day even there was a, my boss was leaving and I said, Hey, on, let's check the schedule before you leave. Cause you know, I was a new vet and there was something at three o'clock called an HH. And I'm like, what is that? I'm not sure I can do that by myself. And it turned out to be a hedgehog. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And in you know, practice, you see everything, but I was the main or only um, equine vet. And so I slowly built up that clientele over the years. They had some, but um, that's what I wanted to do. So I, mm-hmm. I got equipment and training and, and, you know, just, just uh, hit that hard. And so um, what was tough about it was that it was since I was the only one, it was it was me twenty four seven. So um, we would work all day, and then you get emergency calls, and um, and in this time I was trying to get my master's degree, and also doing some um, work at the University of Illinois as a as a coordinator. Um, mm. So it, it it was it was challenging, and I was it's one of those things where you know you you can't even go see a movie because your pager goes off or you you sure. know, be in the grocery store. And, and I don't think people realize that, you know, you fill your cart up with stuff and then your pager goes off. So mm-hmm. I, I think I probably abandoned a lot of carts of groceries. <laughs> and then you asked how it prepared me for the smart pack job. Um, yes. I think, I think practicing, I think every veterinarian, no matter what they want to do in the long run should practice mm-hmm. and get a feel for that. But while I was there, like I wasn't busy enough, I also um, redesigned their logo and their brochures, and I, I hosted client education events, and that's something I'm still really involved with today at SmartPak. Yeah, that sounds so interesting, and uh, kind of going into the next question, uh, you were also the American Association of Equine Practitioners Director of Owner Education. Right. So how did that role come about? It sounds like uh-huh. a pretty perfect fit after doing what you were doing for the for the private practice. Right. So I was in practice and um, it I think it started with the dean of the <clears throat> vet school, at Illinois, saw me at an event and he's like, hey, you want to come back and work for me? Sure. <laughs> so um, I it took on a role. Very, it, it wasn't full time, clearly. It wasn't even half time, but it was just a uh, a program coordinator of something called the executive veterinary program. So it was a uh, three days every other month. We would bring vets on campus and we would teach them a variety of, of business and communication and marketing and even like personal development skills. And while I was doing that, I was involved in um, committees and, and councils and task forces for AAEP and also for AVMA. That's the American Veterinary Medical Association, and the Mm -hmm. executive director of AAP, Gary Carpenter, he said, hey, when are you going to come work for me? So (laughs) I'm like, well, I already have two jobs. It's like, oh, just (laughs) part time. So so then I went down, um, their headquarters are at the Horse Park in Kentucky in in Lexington, which Mm -hmm. is very cool. And so they... This was this was their first ever director of owner education, so it was a brand wow. new position. Yeah, and um, I built a standalone website for horse owners, and that's now been rolled into their um, vet member website. I wrote horse health articles, something I did even back in my vet school days. It's how mm-hmm. I paid to go to school. You know, I I kept doing that client education event stuff. So there was a. Uh, a horseman's day at the uh, the big vet convention that I ran. And, and then also I was involved in like member services and student programs. So also well-rounded. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and how, how does that help your role at Smart Pack again today? Well, so one of the things that I spend my, a lot of my time at is um, marketing or communicating to veterinarians and making sure they know everything that SmartPak has to offer them and their clients. And and one of them is we sponsor uh, client education events at veterinary clinics. So if if a vet clinic, you know, they call up and they say, hey, I'm having like 200 clients over for an open house. Can you provide um, some giveaways or some brochures, say on Colicare? Then sure, we we send them stuff and um, help them put on a, a nice 
fun event for their clients. Yeah. So really help to educate horse owners on exactly on things. Yeah. Because they'll have a couple of lectures and one of the lectures might be on colic, which ties in nicely if they can then hand out a brochure on our colic, or colic surgery reimbursement program. How, so how did you end up uh, moving from there to SmartPak? <laughs> so um, after AAP, I went to, I was executive director at the Hooved Animal Humane Society, which as you can guess, mm-hmm. is a, a rescue, a horse rescue. And um, there I gained experience in the, um, all sorts of new things through grant writing, fundraising, humane investigation. Um, I lobbied at the state and federal levels, uh, coordinated mm-hmm. volunteers. Yeah. And um, and I became familiar with SmartPak because we would rescue or impound um, a lot of older horses with joint issues. Mm-hmm. And so they would go on a joint supplement. And and then um, I saw a post by SmartPak. I don't even remember where it was. Looking, They were looking for a, a veterinarian to be on staff. And um, mm-hmm. so I called and, and started interviewing. And, and I remember one of the key people that I interviewed with early on was the, one of the founders, Paul Gisalt. And after speaking with me a while, he went, you know, I, I think you might be genetically engineered for this position. So, <laughs> you know, because of my background in, in writing articles and putting on educational events and um, I had a, a big network of veterinarians. I had lots mm-hmm. of, of people in different um, disciplines that I knew. So it was a really, really good fit. Yeah. And you're also a, a reputable and trusted source. So people, people yeah, and, you know, really and understand what you're saying. Exactly. And I'm a rider and a driver too. So, I mean, I get, right. I get what horse owners are dealing with. <laughs> this trochaner that I have now, I mean, I love him, but my goodness, he's, he had a colic surgery he has PSSM and shivers and he's a head shaker mm-hmm. and he's on an inhaler because he has recurrent <laughs> airway obstruction. I mean, he has everything. So I'm like, Oh my goodness. Yeah. I know so much because I've, I've done it with him. Yeah. You, you are a horse owner. <laughs> uh, so what does, what does your normal day at smart pack entail? Um, well, I think I mentioned already, I do a lot of communicating or marketing uh, with veterinarians. And so that could be uh, direct mailings. It could be print ads I coordinate and go to a lot of trade shows and also the the sponsoring of the client education events at various clinics around the country. Um, I think I also brought up Colicare. So mm-hmm. I review um, enrollments, applications, and then I also review claims and, and answer any questions that come up about anything having to do with that program. Um, I'm spending a lot of my time right now on uh, research of our, of our supplements. So, um, I'm, I'm finishing, well, and so some studies I do myself, but, but more of them I coordinate with an investigator at a university. So uh, mm-hmm. right now we're finishing up one with a ingredient supplier. One's kicking off, well, I kicked off Monday at Louisiana State University, LSU, and I've got one kicking off in about three weeks at Texas A&M University. So kind of keeping all those balls juggling and, you know, you got to provide them with, with product and you have to write the protocols and, and you have to do the desk research on the references. And there's a lot of moving parts to research projects and to have three going at once is a little bit terrifying. Yeah. That's incredible. And yeah. and all to make, make a better product for the everyday horse. Yeah. Owner, and, right? just, and just to show people that, um, the product that that we are providing is um, we have some excellent excellent uh, published research on our Smart Gut Ultra product, which mm-hmm. is for stomach health. And um, there, it was actually presented at the AAEP annual convention, so it got in front of a lot of veterinarians. And so now, when when a veterinarian is dealing with the horse with say um, stomach issues, they'll prescribe a, a pharmaceutical and say, I think based on this research at the same time, you should probably add this, this gastric health supplement. They seemed to work nicely together to um, get your horse's stomach where we want it. A couple other things I do is um, if you've been on the website, a lot of, I generate a lot of content. So I will write articles. Um, There's the Ask the Vet videos. There's an Ask the Vet blog. I also train the customer care team. I mean, we have a world-class customer service team that answers the phones and they they'll they'll email they'll click to chat you can you can contact them in a variety of ways to for whatever help you need and 
And but before they ever go on the phone, they get a lot of training in equine health and nutrition. And then they get what what I would call as a veterinarian CE or continuing education. So we don't mm-hmm. stop when they go on the phones and say, "Okay, good luck." But but we continue to provide them with information about um, our products, about horse health in general, and and how they should be fed, and and also about the other products, the other brands that we sell. So they're very knowledgeable about. Um, any anything that you might want to purchase from us. Yeah, and, and like you said, that uh, CE, making sure that they're staying up to date on on everything and all the research that you're doing to, to make sure the, the customer gets the best product for their situation. Exactly, yep. Yeah, um, so you were kind of going into this, but how? why is it important to Smart Pack to help educate horse owners in nutrition and horse health? I think so that they, they select the appropriate product for their Mm -hmm. their horse because when I'm providing any training whether it's you know internal to our employees or external if I'm speaking at an event I always say that it starts with you know a healthy horse so you involve your vet and then providing a complete and balanced diet and then based in forage and then once that's done then you look and see what issues does my particular individual horse have and where can I um provide support in addition to what he's getting from his, his normal everyday diet. So, you know, the one thing my horse has is very good feet. So I, well, I don't have him on a hoof supplement. There are lots of horses who don't have good feet and can benefit mm-hmm. from a biotin based um, product that, that has been shown to improve the, the hardness and the integrity and the resilience of the, of the hoof. And we've talked about um, gut health and hoof care. Now, what other uh, products does Smart Pack have to offer? Can you kind of give us an overview? Do you mean supplement wise or the whole range of products? Yeah, supplements specifically. I'm going to try to go down like in order. Probably the most popular is joint. I mean, mm-hmm. Every when I got my horse as a four year old, knowing a lot of veterinarians around the country, they staff that at uh, Nutramax and they make Cosequin. She mm-hmm. gifted me with his very, very first joint supplement and and said, you know, you're you have a new horse. Here's your horse warming gift. Start him on a supplement right away. And I thought that was it was great. And I've never forgotten it. Um, so oh, what a great gift. <laughs> I know. And, and, and it's I've done a lot of. Um, research on and reading on joints and joint supplements and how they work and the different ingredients and, and stay up to date. And, and I really do believe that um, putting a horse on a joint supplement early on is, is sort of the best medicine. If you can get those, those components and those building blocks of normal, healthy joint tissue, the cartilage and the, the, the fluid and, and that in there available to use as needed, because you know, the problems in joints are like a, a daily wear and tear sort of thing. Sure, there, trauma can happen, but it's really a, a lifetime of use. And so let's let's get them the support they need from the get-go. Yeah, help them be the, the best that he can be. Yeah, so we talked about joint and hoof and um, gastric support. And I, in conjunction with colicare is um, hindgut support. So mm-hmm. we divide the horse's digestive system of the, the massive thing that it is into the foregut, which is the the stomach and small intestine and the hindgut, which is the, the large intestine, the colon and cecum. And so there's different ingredients that um, work to maintain health in each of those areas. And so like in the, in the hindgut, it might be things like probiotics, prebiotics, yeast is a big one, those kind of things just to stabilize the gut and help extract the most nutrition that uh, it, the horse can out of what it's being fed. And maybe even um, protect a little bit against changes, you know, when the spring comes and the, the lush grass comes up or what people don't, a lot of people don't know is the the grass can be just as dangerous to the fall as it goes mm-hmm. into dormancy. So um, joint, yeah. hoof, uh, stomach and hindgut, uh, calming, I think is a big category for us, um, skin and coat. Uh, there's, there's, there's probably, you know, 20 or 30 categories, but those, those are probably the big ones. Yeah. Do you, do you have a favorite or one that you see most <laughs> prevalent? <laughs> um, well, I think, I think, like I mentioned, joint is probably the mm-hmm. the best selling, but to me, it's not as much of a favorite for me as, as what does the horse need? 
after you, sure. you know, you've looked at the diet, you've, you provided what he needs based on the, the NRC's um, nutrient requirements of horses. And, and then what are still some problem areas? So I, I do think though, that said that um, omega-3 fatty acids and probably vitamin E are my, my go-tos. Like that's probably mm-hmm. the first thing I would ask a horse owner if your horse is getting the right amount and ratio up. That's really interesting. Um, what health related resources are available to horse owners at Smart Pack to help them better understand this? We have a horse health library and it has tons and tons of articles about a wide variety of topics from all sorts of diseases and conditions to even um, how to how to select a supplement and then how to know if it's working. There's also tons and tons of videos. Um, there's the Ask the Vet blog where people have written in with a specific question. And I try to answer the ones that aren't so specific as to only apply to that person. But but ones I get asked a lot. And so I, I think that um, a lot of people will probably have the same question, like like electrolytes, for example, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and how to um, cool off a horse in the summer, knowing it's too hot to ride and then vice versa in the winter. I get those questions on a seasonal basis. Um, one one resource I think is probably overlooked because because it's a little bit hard to find is is our ingredient glossary. So if you have any questions about, you know, glucosamine, chondroitin sulfate, HA, turmeric, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin E, you can go to our ingredient glossary and read a little paragraph about each one and then understand them a bit better. And and then the newest things are we've developed these um, resource centers. There's a colleague resource center. There is a senior horse resource center. And it's it's not really any new information, but we've made it, if that's your topic of interest, colic or senior horse, we have gathered all of our resources together into one place to make it easy for you to look through them all. So whether you like to listen to things, to watch videos, to read, to print out lists, it's all there in one place and conveniently located for you. Yeah, and, and it seems like it's really accessible to horse owners where yeah. and when they need it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so what is your your favorite role? If you had to choose, what's your, the favorite thing that you do at Smart Pack? Actually, I think it's a variety of things that I get to do, that I, 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 I get to communicate and work with the veterinarians. I get to interact with horse owners. And and I also think that, you know, in practice, you might have a couple hundred clients, maybe 500, maybe a thousand. But here in this role, I, no pressure, but I get to influence many, many more horses and horse owners than that. So um, right. it's, it's kind of a, a big, big, uh, big request, you know, but, but I also feel like I'm, I'm doing some good out there. Yeah. Really getting to help a lot of people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, it motivates me to stay uh, current and and up to date with all of the science and medicine. Yeah, definitely. Um, If there was one message that you could pass on to horse owners regarding horse health and nutrition products, what would it be? Well, I think people who have watched any of my videos will have noticed that quite a few times I encourage people to keep track of things they notice in their horse and, and um, exercise programs, medication supplements. So so keeping a journal, I think is really important because by doing that, you discover like, that's how I discovered my horse had PSSM because I would take him to a show and he would act funny. And then he would do these certain behaviors at home. And, and finally I added it up and I said, you know, these all point to this this one condition, and and so then I began to pursue a, a diagnosis and treatment. So, if if horse owners do that on their own horses, they might discover that a horse that's losing weight, well, here's here's maybe why, or a horse that's not mm-hmm. not losing weight and they mean it to, like an easy keeper who's you know packing on the pounds. Maybe maybe if you look in your journal, you'll find that you for whatever reason, had to back off your exercise. And then they started gaining weight because of that. So I think keeping track of things and, and, and observing your horse closely 
is uh, is probably the best piece of advice I can I can share. Yeah, that's really beneficial. I think I might start one actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good advice. Uh, well, that's all the questions that I have. Was there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Oh no, I think we we hit the high points. Um, I get to mention my wonderful horse Newman, and yes. <laughs> so no, it's good. Awesome. Well, thank you, Lydia. I really appreciate you being on the podcast and you talking to us. Thanks for tuning in. Learn more about the Ask Annie podcast by following us on Facebook and Instagram at Ask Annie Podcast. Have a suggestion for a product you'd like me to use in an upcoming episode? Email me at askanniepodcast at gmail.com or leave a comment on any of our social media pages. Find even more Ask Annie episodes anywhere you listen to podcasts, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and many more. The Ask Annie podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network, an entity of Active Interest Media and the Equine Network.